fill that in. It's a weird title, but you yeah. like those, yeah. which is great. Yeah. yeah. Get there's a there's an obscure little verse in Nehemiah where the the bad guys are coming against Nehemiah and they say, We hear bad you're doing a bunch of bad things and Gashmu saith it. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, we've, heard it. we've heard dirt on you. Yeah. And and Gashmu is the one who uh, oh, is our good. source. And so that I love that phrase, Gashmu saith it. Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Talk. My name is Richard Henry, and you can see my guest today. We're Hi. here at Fight Life Feast, Doug Wilson, Pastor Doug Wilson. Uh, why don't you just briefly give a history, Pastor Doug, if you don't mind, of kind of what's gone on at Moscow, how long, like how you got up there, and, okay. and just kind of the building. You got the press, the school, the college, of course, your church, church plants. So this is a telescoped uh, timeline, but my parents moved to Moscow in 1971. Uh, I, I graduated from high school, I helped them move there, and then a few months later I went into the Navy. So I was in the Navy from 71 to 75 while my folks were putting roots down in Moscow. My dad was there to open up Christian literature missions, okay. books, bookstores that were evangelistic, apologetic. So one at Washington State University eight miles away in Pullman, Washington, and the other uh, in Moscow at the University of, Idaho, University of Idaho, which is why he moved there. There were two small towns with two universities, major universities in two small towns, wow. eight miles apart, which made it strategically significant. So, and everything that is going on in Moscow is downstream from that decision because he, he wanted disproportionate influence. That was the name of the game. Yeah. Uh, then what happened was I got out of the Navy in 75. In the fall of 75, my dad had uh, begun filling the pulpit for an E-Free Church in Pullman that had lost their pastor. It had grown uh, remarkably. A number of people from Moscow were going over there, so we hived off and planted a little Jesus People type church uh, in 1975. It's the 70s, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. the 70s. And, uh, and I was a song leader. I was a student at U of I at the time. And about a year and a half into that, we didn't affiliate with the e free denomination, not because of any doctrinal anything, but because it was the 70s. Yeah. And so we, uh, uh, we went on. A year and a half later, the man who was doing the preaching announced that he had gotten a job in another city and he was going to be gone the next week. And good luck, everybody. And <laughs> so... I was up Two front. week notice, uh, yeah. just just one week. Uh, one week. Yeah. I was up front with the guitar, and and so um, I preached the next Sunday, and that's how I wound up in the ministry. So I started preaching uh, at what is now Christ Church in 1977. Okay. Then a few years later, we started Logos School for our oldest daughter, uh, her kindergarten year. That was. Uh, 80, 81. Was that out of the church building, I guess? Or no, we didn't have, didn't have a church building. We, okay. uh, we rented the church basement from another church and started up. And Logos School gradually uh, uh, took, took root, uh, grew. 19, 18, 19 students the first year. And then uh, now, this year, it's like over 600 wow. students. Wow. So in a town like Moscow, that's a significant... How, how big is the population? About twenty-two thousand okay. Um, okay. people. Well, so yeah, it's a, I thought it was bigger than that. Okay. All right. It's um, and it's the tenth or eleventh largest town in Idaho. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the, not saying a lot. The, Idaho's the, not very big. The, so yeah. we have a lot of trees. Yeah. We have a, we have a lot of trees. So um, then that was Becca's kindergarten year. Her after she graduated from high school, her freshman year of college. We opened New St. Andrews College. Okay, that's right. right. I remember so that. we started Logos. We started Logos for um, Becca and and our other kids, and we started NSA for Becca and our other kids. Yeah. So that was the early '90s, and then uh, uh, Canon Press was started in 1988 or thereabouts. Okay. The magazine Credenda Agenda, which had a 20-year run, was late '80s. Uh, that sort of, those were the things that 
sort of gave gave us a uh, national uh, microphone and national presence. Yeah. The okay. uh, the books and the uh, and then in 2004 I began blogging, uh, and that has been sort of the next level. And okay. we've added so all of the things have accumulated slowly. Okay. Nice. And so you and you wrote Dash Move Saith It, which is yes. fill that in. It's a weird title, but you yeah. like those, yeah. which is great. And, yeah. Get there's a there's an obscure little verse in Nehemiah where the the bad guys are coming against Nehemiah and they say, We hear bad you're doing a bunch of bad things and Dash Move saith it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. we heard we've, it. we've heard dirt on you. Yeah. And and Gashmu is the oh, one who uh, oh, is our good. source. And so that I love that phrase, Gashmu saith it. And the subtitle is Building Christian Communities to Save the World, basically. Yeah. Um, how, how to build Christian community that embodies and, and instantiates what we call all of Christ for all of life. Okay. And so, and that's really, and so is, is the book then kind of an elongation of what you just told me? Yeah. Okay. You know, you're just kind of the details of going different stuff like that and moving through. Um, would you change anything or alter anything or, or maybe some commending words for uh, somebody who's in random state USA yeah. and like, hey, we, we like this. We really want that. We might not line up everything, but Christ is king and, and we want to live for him. We want to impact the world. Uh, the, what would you suggest? The thing uh, that step I would, one, two, three, sort of thing. The, the thing that I would say is essential. There, are, there are all sorts of variations on a theme that different people could do in different places. But I would say worship is central. Okay. So, uh, whatever it is you're doing, you want worship to be the driving engine, uh, and have everything else connected to the fact that your people are going into heaven once a week, worshiping the Lord there, okay. and you're pouring a slab of concrete once a week, and everything you build that week, you want to go on that concrete. You you want it to line up with the with the worship. Okay. All right. No, that's good. Um, I guess lastly, just kind of play play devil's advocate for a moment. Weird sure. phrase, but you know, uh, it, it makes sense why unbelievers don't like Christians, especially like you guys. You're out. You're this. Hey, we have a school. We have these things. Witnessing, preaching the word. Lots of resources in a small town, right? 20, yeah. 22,000 people. Uh, but why do I love the term Big Eva? I don't know who coined it. It was a Carl Truman, I think, somebody like that. Yeah. Why does Big Eva not like you and what happens in Moscow? Yeah. Do you have any idea? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. So. <laughs> so I would divide it into different categories. Okay. Like maybe three different categories. And we're talking about Christians here. Yeah. Right. But even within the even within the Christian world, there are people who are hostile to the project because they don't want the Word of God to be authoritative. Mm. The, the motives are bad. Mm -hmm. so they just don't want to have the Word of God be authoritative over everything they do. All right. And so they're they're true adversaries. They they, they don't like even it. though they're, even though they're professing Christians. Even though they're professing okay. Christians, okay. Okay. you guys aren't loving like Jesus. You know. Right. 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 Then there are people uh, who well-meaning Christian pastors who's had one too many fanboy of Doug Wilson come up to him after a sermon saying, well, that's not, that's not what Doug Wilson says. And yeah. right. And so he's been taught to hate the sound of my name, but he's a good guy. He loves the Lord. He's his family's in order, but he's heard things on the internet. He's got an obnoxious fan of mine or two in his congregation. An idol worshiper. He, yeah. He's got, He's got reasons for his prejudice. Yeah. It's not. It's not. He didn't make up his prejudice out of a uh, whole cloth. Yeah. Right. So he. Um, that's that's the second category. The third category, I would say, is Christians who like what I do. They like reading what I write. They're encouraged by it. But if they they know that if they poke their head out, they're going to be in as much trouble as I am. <laughs> yeah right okay and yeah. they've got an elder board or they've got a mortgage to pay or they've yeah. got a school board I, I can't tell you I can't tell you how many times I've had people uh, distance themselves from me when I know that they appreciate and like 
mm. what mm. I'm doing, mm. wow. right? Yeah. Because the the cost is just too high. Mm -hmm. So some people are just against against what I'm doing. Some people have misunderstandings of what I'm doing because of fanboys or yeah. some slander on the internet that affected them or whatever. But they're good people. They just believe something they shouldn't believe. And then there are people who know that I'm not a racist. They know that I'm not, I don't defend sexual predators. They know, they know all this right. stuff is false. But they also know that if they say, yeah, I like Wilson, then they're going to get attacked the same way Wilson is currently getting attacked. And, uh, and so it's just kind of risky. Yeah. Why did Nicodemus visit Jesus by night? Yeah. Well, yeah. he had something to protect. Yeah, likely so. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Well, do uh, you have anything else you want to add for the audience? Any encouraging, no. other encouraging words? Uh, be good. Don't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> be a good Christian. Obey yeah. Christ. That's right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Pastor Doug. Thanks so much. Thank you. Y'all have a good rest of your day. Check out Canon Press. You guys have the app, of course, yeah. that monthly subscription where all the, all it, yeah, the audio books, it, everything. It, there's so much content there. It's yeah. ridiculous. I love your uh, comment. He was, you know, one of your poetic ways of saying, and he said, and there'll be, what'd you say? And there'll be servers in the catacombs. So <laughs> I forget where it was, but yeah. talking about like when you, you cancel yeah. and everything. And, and really, I think that's something that's, I'm thankful for, you know, even if we don't, I'm a, I'm a pastor at SBC church, so I'm Baptist, but, uh, there's a lot of problems in the SBC and I love, yeah. I'm actually friends with Eric Smith who did the bald guy with the presentation. And, uh, we were both at the SBC this year and, uh, the plagiarism is so many, it's yeah. a whole other topic, but. Um, I'm thankful, very, very deeply thankful. And I, I've got a whole community of other content creators and podcasters that are very thankful for your work and you know, like Toby's and Jared's. And just the, the, hey, Christ is King and we need to do this. People are getting canceled, but we need to hedge our bets. And, and so again, thank you for the time. So anyway, right. see ya.